Hi, my name's Kai, I'm 18, and this is my story. I moved from in the city at a young age to rural Wales. Since then I faced bullying, not wanting to go out, just because I was different, just because I was not from here and had different interests. Mainly I was getting bullied at school, just for, uh, by the teachers, for not doing homework, for being tired, for not paying attention. All because I have a disabled mum, which I have to look after. I used to have to go to hospital with her late at night. And Tash really helped me because they've given the leverage of me doing homework. I could hand it in when I wanted to. When I was tired, I could have sometimes got out of class so I could focus without people around me. And that really helped me. And this is just a story basically on how I've come from being bullied and troubled and not wanting to go out and not going out to going out. I moved to a school which was uh, very few people in it, uh, for locals which I didn't really fit in because I wasn't from here obviously. I was the new kid, I was different because I had uh, different parents, different style of living, we were in a caravan obviously so that was different to everyone else. So I didn't really go out with friends because I was looking after my mum. I didn't go out at all for almost a year. Just sat in sort of lost friendships. Uh, just really unactive. Just didn't want to come back from school, sat inside all day. Oh, this is me as a kid. Should a kid really feel like this when they're a child? Got a lot of stuff going through my head at the moment at this point. Hi Kai, thanks for agreeing to come along today. I know you know I'm from Team Around the Family and I wanted to introduce Lizzie. Hi Kai, nice Hi. to meet you. And Lizzie is a youth worker and from when we had our last PATH meeting what we thought might be good is if you got some time with a youth worker so you could talk, think through some things with her. So how is school life for you Kai? I'm getting in trouble for things that aren't really my fault. Okay. So, how is uh, home life for you, Kai? Um, just looking after mum, getting really tired, can't get to sleep. Oh, that sounds quite quite hard for you. And you're not, not sleeping very well at home, is it? No, mm -hmm. not really. There's my mentor, Lizzie, over there. She helped me for a couple of months, taking me out, just getting my uh, mind off of things, really. And there's Fiona over there as well, the TAF coordinator. Just not had the opportunity to get out really. Not really felt like it. We'll, we'll try and see what we can do. Have a look at that, maybe have a bit of a plan. Mm. So it's not all at once, but just gradually. Then me and Fiona are both here to talk to you and help you through what's going on. And we'll have a few sessions. And then obviously we'll try and get your confidence up to start going out again and try and help you through whatever's going on at home or at school. Try and build up some self-esteem yeah. and make sure the people that need to know stuff about what it was going on for you do know. Yeah. I found that TAF really took a long time to work, but in the end it did sort of help with the school, uh, giving them leeway on my homework and stuff. So these meetings were boring, but they did kind of help. And... That's when really TAF started to come in then. They come into the school, they gave me a few solutions that didn't really help, but then the part where they come into the school and spoke to them gave me a barrier up, sort of that they got involved and said, listen, it's not an excuse that he's coming in late or he's not paying attention. It's the fact that his mum's ill or his, his dad, he's looking after both of them or he's just not getting enough sleep because he's up with them. 
and that really helped because the teachers kind of got off my back and then I started to really want to try in school then so I thought that everyone because they were kind of helping me after that gave me a reason to work harder get good grades sort of concentrate more do my homework when I could if I was a bit annoyed or just tired I could take some time out of school and just really focus on the work that I hadn't done that really helped and now I've got my confidence back I'm going out it's, it's great and we're here, me and Fiona are here to help you uh, with what's going on at home or in school to talk through it and see if we can make things better for you. So one of my biggest things about school was I have really bad dyslexia which doesn't really help when doing writing or anything to do with words. It's the fact that when I write it doesn't come out like a normal sentence so that was really hard and there wasn't really many people to understand that and the help wasn't really useful because the people didn't really understand what dyslexia was because they didn't have it themselves. That really didn't help. So there was a lot of things that could have changed but didn't. But now I'm at college, that definitely helps because the tutor has dyslexia. So he's more understanding and knows how to help because he's got it himself and he can deal with it. And he's kind of given me sort of like coping strategies and I've got a lot of new uh, software on the computer. So. Really, I've overcome that. That's not really a problem anymore. So uh, when I was five, I used to get sent down to the shop, the local Nisa, by myself to get the shopping. And the, all the people that worked there used to know me by name. And I used to talk to them. And I think they talked to me more than they talked to my parents, actually. I don't think they even know who my parents were. They just used to, I used to just be the local. I used to go down there with my granddad most of the time just to get the shopping and just I knew everyone pretty much around there. I just used to wander off on my own, back to the shop, back to the house. Uh, when I was growing up money was definitely a problem. We didn't have very much. Uh, most of the time my mum and dad would go without food so I would get food or I could get some new clothes or just something I needed for school so that's a real big problem. In 2013 things got worse, money problems were worse than ever, we didn't really have enough money for food, well for all three of us. Dad's mental health went downhill with him being worse than ever, the tablets weren't working, he had appointments that he couldn't get to due to money so it was just getting worse and worse. Things were pretty much going downhill. Just used to like pretty much shut down, not want to do anything, not talk, just not want to go out, not want to go anywhere new or somewhere I've been before. Frustrates me because I feel kind of. The issue of just getting out the outside of the house was hard at first, and then going to new places was pretty much impossible because I just didn't feel comfortable there or didn't know where I was. So, so that's a real low point, and really, this is where things started to change. Sometimes you just got to pick yourself up, and that's what I did. Yeah, I think definitely going out, doing things, I realised that then it made a difference because I wasn't thinking about the problem and it kind of felt abnormal-ish then. But then occasionally it didn't quite work because I went out to places and I wouldn't get out of the car because I was just 
not feeling good or just nervous really because I lost all confidence. the outdoor basketball court in Newtown when I first learned to play basketball. So this is the first place where I started. I used to come down here pretty much every day whenever I was free, just to come practice, get better, really take my mind off things really. I was about 50 I used to come down here when I first started. I pretty much went out in all weathers, so that's snow, rain, ice, whatever. I just used to come play. Uh, Mum waited pretty much all the time outdoors. She pretty much made herself ill by waiting out in the cold for me to try and get better. I think I kind of lost count on how many times I came here before I got good enough to make 10 in a row. But I came here for a good month and a bit, just pretty much every day. I've done a lot of other sporting things, like I've, I am ranked fifth in Wales for javelin. Um, Wales from then to now has definitely changed my perspective on it. When I first came, I thought it was a bit, it was too far away from everything. It was a bit different. I didn't really get on with the people, but now I, everywhere has its downfalls and it's not everywhere's perfect, but Wales is definitely a good, great place to live. You, there's got all the outdoors activities. Yes, you're miles away from everything, but that kind of makes it fun because when, when you get to somewhere, it makes it much more interesting. It's just, most of the people are quite friendly. It's just, you got to find something that you like about the place. So I like the outdoors. There's mountains, places to climb, biking. There's loads to do here. Although there's there's hardly any shops and stuff, it's still it's not paradise, but it's a great place to live. <laughs> okay, now I play for Team Birmingham Elite Basketball Club, which is a national level basketball club for under 18s. I'm also a level two basketball ref, so I've done regionals, men's and women's, and also my age. I'm a coach, so I coach a local team, which I started to get kids active and about really just getting them off the sofa. I think it was just practice, really. I think it was the fact that I just went out every day, whatever weather, and then practiced as hard as I possibly could. Obviously, I'm not the right height to play, because there's a lot taller players, but it was just the fact that it was the repetitive movement of I kept shooting, I kept dribbling, doing layup. As long as you practice and put in the hard work and effort, you can you can achieve pretty much everything. You can be as good as the ones that are naturally talented. Obviously they're going to be slightly higher level, but you can get up there to a good level. Uh, I'm also going to university next year. I've got a scholarship and I've got an uh, unconditional offer, so I'm going to take that and I'm going to uh, coach the basketball team and also play in it. I also coach at college and I play at college. So I made it here to Shrewsbury College. I'm doing outdoor level three sport. So that's canoeing, kayaking, rock climbing, mountain biking. It's great, I'm really enjoying it. So let's go in and talk to my tutor. Hi, my name is Simon Edwards. I'm the course director for the Outdoor Investors Training course at Shrewsbury College of Arts and Technology. It's an extended diploma, level three, which means it's equivalent to three A-level courses. During that subject time, we cover kayaking, canoeing, gorge walking, rock climbing, mountaineering, um, adventurous activities, organising events for charity, running expeditions. Uh, Kai came to me in September 2016. When he first came here at the college, he was a very shy, insolent lad, but we could see an awful lot of potential in him. Over the 22 months now he's been with us, he has turned into a fine leader, a very good student, a distinction student throughout. And we're now looking for him to get either Student of the Year award or even more precious than that, the accolade of being the Ethan Chant Trophy. 
So congratulations Kai, I'm really proud of you mate, you've been great. Okay Kai, um, it's been great having you on the course mate, it's been a pleasure having you on. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you move on this year. What do you plan on doing next year? Uh, I'm going to university to do outdoor leadership, so pretty much the same thing but in uni. Great stuff. In UCLan, so that should be good. So I want to further my outdoor skills and see if I can become more of a leader. Brilliant. I can use it outside and how do you think you've developed as a person mate? Since you my confidence has definitely come up. Yeah. So more sociable, more physically active now. Yeah. So we're doing the outdoor sports. Great. Yeah, that has come through, mate. Yeah, the maturity has, has come through so much, mate. And what I love about you, mate, is I'm like, happy to give you responsibility and ask you to do something for me. I don't have to watch over you anymore. It's getting it done. Too. You've got a lot of respect amongst the group. You listen to your tutors. You listen to your peers. Um, you're a caring, caring person, a caring leader now. Um, do you think that's the, what the outdoor course has developed for you? Yeah, I think the outdoor course gives you like skills to go out, not just in the outdoors, but you can take them out in everyday life. Yeah. So you can take them out in your jobs, whatever you're doing, really. Yeah, great. So it gives you that confidence and that know-how to communicate and like, safely do things. Oh, good. So that's the life skills that it's brought to you. Mm -hmm. I think that's where it comes with the adversity, because you've had some long, hard days out in the Welsh mm -hmm. mountains, haven't you, in all sorts of other conditions. And you've come through, instead of sitting back and going, you know, I just want to wrap up warm, mm. you've come through as a leader at the front and pushed lads on and said, come on, we can do this, let's get on with it. And got a lot out of it, personal development. Yeah, so definitely. well done. Resilience. Well, what resilience really means to me is going through the hard times and being able to cope with it, not like I was before. It's just having the people there to help you. Like, whether that's in college now, I've got all my friends, my tutors, or just with my teams that I do sports with. It's just people to help you and guide you through. And you're not alone with the fact that you're not the only one that's going to be going through stuff like this. Uh, what I would say to someone that was going through the sort, same sort of thing as I was, or difficulties, is that just let people help and take all the help you get that's offered. So don't refuse anything because you think it, just try it and it might help. And also get friends and family, try not to push them away and isolate yourself because that's the worst thing that I did. I wasn't getting out, wasn't doing anything. Just try and mix with people like, say if you like a hobby or a sport, sport really helped me. Just try and get out and do something because it takes your mind off it. Plus also that gets you to socialise, which really helps. So just do something you like doing because eventually it will help. Even though it's difficult, it will help. So I'm Kai, this is my story. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching, now for the next chapter.